Uh, oh my god. I'm a freaking god. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. I'm in the middle of a home war. There's a. Uh, I was woken up by the sound of um, so many machines, so many <laughs> men, so many men pulling down every tree, and then uh, and then a man came and knocking, and those men were in my house to paint my kitchen, and I didn't know that any of this was going to happen. Oh um, no! Uh, and this is after two months of pretty much this, um, and my landlord then saying she's got to sell the house at the end of it all. So suffice to say, I'm a little stressed. Um, Do you have to find a new place to live? Probably, yeah. Luckily, Uh, the realtors are really nice, and they were like, we'll help you find a place. And I was like, well, I'm good at it because I found this place. And then I realized I found a place that I could only live in for a year and a half. (laughs) And I'm sick of moving. I've moved so many times. Moving sucks. (laughs) And I've done it so much because I'm always in something temporary and it's like why are you doing this to yourself and why do i do this in every other area of my life hmm (laughs) i don't know why i'm asking you have the same name by the way as my therapist who i just had a session with so oh okay that's awesome (laughs) (laughs) you don't you don't want the job trust me uh hi so she must be about our age because that name, you know how some names are very decades generational. Specific? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I think she's like a little over forty. Oh. Well, that works. I'm almost forty-two, so it's that I late eighties, the mm-hmm. late seventies, early eighties. Tiff, hey, Tiff, meet. Hey, me and Tiff and the gals are gonna go to the arcade. You want to go? Mm-hmm. Well, do you remember Tiffany from the 80s, the singer? And then Tiffany, yeah. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. I think that kind of started a lot of that. Did you just ask me if I know an artist from the 80s? Well, yeah. I would know any of them. (laughs) Well, you were born in the 80s, right? I was born at the very end of the The 80s. very end, yeah. I was born just in time to be in the zeitgeist at the same time as when Harry met Sally and... Depeche Mode's Violator. So to me, you know, those are my two favorite things, pretty much. Yeah. (laughs) So I, so I might as well have been born 20 years earlier so that I could have experienced the 80s in the same way. Mm -hmm. Now I'm trying to live it (sighs) posthumously. That works. Is this light good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get it real close to your face. (laughs) It's like I'm at the dentist. This light is like your It does. It looks like a dentist light. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't look great in there. Just kidding. I have always had good teeth. Anyway, <laughs> I'm in hell. How are you? What's going on with you? Oh, I've had a busy week. Yeah? Yeah, but it's been good. Oh, we Who's got a that? party. <laughs> so <laughs> this is your first TikTok live. Um, uh-huh. So people will use these coins that you can purchase through TikTok to send mm-hmm. gifts like corgis or fireworks or you'll see all kinds of fun things popping up in here. That's I, so I don't really under, I don't understand it. I, I don't do that, but people love it. And so we'll just see some fun things. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm down. I guess it's a conversation spurrer. Not that we need it, but, you know. Oh, no. I could talk all day long. I got so many things to say. <laughs> That's nice. I I, uh, I apparently can talk all day long too when I'm being paid, um, mm. and I have something to read. Otherwise, I don't really like to talk that much. Really? So, are you more introverted? I don't know anymore. I thought I the first fifteen years of my life, I was an absolute introvert. I was mm-hmm. I did things that were inside and by myself most of the time um and then i i'd been doing orchestra but like it wasn't like a you know i wanted the thrill of the performance but you don't really get it because you're 
in a crew and you're all supposed to be this combined effort. So it's not really like, there's no you focus. Right. Um, but then I started doing theater. And so then it was just like off to the races. And then I started drinking and then it was really off to the races. Mm -hmm. So I was just, I mean, for the last, you know, from age, sorry, there's going to be like hammering and stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Um, from like age 15 to, you know, 31 or whatever. I was, I was, uh, no, if I ever told anyone like, I'm kind of like an extroverted introvert, then they'd be like, shut the fuck up. Because I, because it didn't come across that way at all. I was just, I was always like very social. Um, and now I just, <laughs> I take my own alone time very seriously and mm -hmm. very often. Um, so it's, uh, I, I just don't, I just don't know. I think I've gone back to like what I'm supposed to be, which is like, I can extrovert, but I, and I harnessed a lot of skills in the time that I was a fake extrovert, but mostly I just want to be alone and, yeah, you know, yeah. It drains you. I get drained sometimes. Like I kind of live on that extrovert high of being with people and talking and having fun, but then I crash. crash. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the real definition. Right. So yes, absolutely. I'm an introvert <laughs> because I mean, like I went to a, I went to a show last night with my girlfriend <laughs> um, and uh, sorry, I just I haven't used that term in a long time that phrase um and her friend it was her friend show and then like you know at the end she was like waiting around to like because he was like opening for a bigger artist um so she was waiting around to like say hi to him after and i was like just so ready to go i was ready and luckily in la you can get food oh my god <laughs> you can get food really late okay jesus it's really not that loud on it's loud to our me. end. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I assume it's not that bad <laughs> to the it's rest of the world. It's not that bad for us. But if it bothers you, you can go hide in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, and it does. Yeah, right. Um, uh, and, like, I was just, like, you know, I was being courteous. And I also, like, wanted to meet her friend. So I was sticking around. But I was, like, taking little baby steps to leave. Because I was, like, I don't, I don't want... I want to meet your friends, but I don't want to be here, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and then the, the headliner started playing and it was really bad. Um, so I was like, okay, maybe I can interest myself. Cause I like things that are bad sometimes. Um, so I, you know, just sort of hooked on that. Um, we went to the bathroom at one point and, um, and she, I'd gotten a water bottle and she had the water. She doesn't really drink much, so we were just sharing a water bottle. And when I got out of the bathroom, I sat on a chair outside the bathroom. And this is a moment when, like, I would say, like, okay, if I was actually an introvert, this would have destroyed my sense of being around people. She, like, tossed the water bottle to me. And it was half full, which is really dangerous. Because when it's full full, then, like, you don't have the same kind of lob. Mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> if you don't know really, it's not going to go on its own. You know, and it, but if it's half full, it has just enough weight to send it like a dagger, and it and it hit it smashed my nuts, smashed. <laughs> and I haven't been hit in the balls and <laughs> like that in a very long time. Oh, and I man. just like, oh, like auto, like I almost fell to the ground. I was, um, and I just started laughing because I was like, is this? <laughs> just you know it hurts but i like i'm familiar with the hurt at this point um but it was, she just nailed me um and she felt so bad but like normally i think like that would have been like a reason to be like let's go um where like it would be exhausting not because she did something to me but because it's like you feel physical pain and then you're like i have anxiety and all that so of course it's gonna be like oh no but i but i didn't that I didn't experience that at all. It was just funny. And then I met her friends and then we left. So I don't know. It's always a mixed bag where I don't have like the proper literature maybe to describe mm -hmm. what I actually am.
you're a musician too, but being around really loud music, does it feel overstimulating? Like in that after a while, that's, it's kind of how I get, I get very overstimulated in that sense and need to go yeah. quieter. Cause I, it drains me and it did not. Uh, do. I don't know if this is an age thing or post having kids thing. But yeah. I, in my twenties, I went to so many loud scenarios yeah. and I just, and I didn't care. I was just like all about it. Um, and then I started to, I've been to so many shows now that it started to, to, to eat at me. Um, and so like, I, last night the show wasn't very loud at all. The quality is what I notice now as an audio professional. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I was like, God, the, and this is at the Fonda theater, which is like a historic famous theater in LA. And the sound was tragic. Like it was like, it was like this, like sort of psych pop, you know, fun, funky uh, stuff like that was the, the her my my girlfriend's friend his music um but the bass was blown out and it was like <laughs> like what? when a guy was just playing bass guitar and a guy had a kick drum and it's like why is why why do we need that much sub on something of this uh quality so it'll bother me like that but it wasn't spiking so much that it hurt you know it was just like a little but, you know, now that I've been making super goth music, I go to super goth shows and I need my goddamn earplugs for that. That's for sure. I take earplugs with me. Yeah. <laughs> I have a little like keychain. Yeah. Oh, it makes me feel so old, though. I, I know. know. But I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one that does that. <laughs> the music that I've been making, the genre itself live is so impossibly loud. It, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you get a hat? I want a hat. Oh, oh, now they're all going to come. <laughs> oh, no. Never, I don't want a hat. <laughs> I don't want a hat. Please don't give me a hat. Um, not a Yankees hat, at least. I don't I don't care about baseball. Um, anyway, but yeah, so I, you know, I'll, I'll go to a show every now and then, and then it's, it's just like, <clears throat> and this is like, uh, it's kind of an older crowd. Why did I sound so Russian just then? <laughs> this is like kind of older crowd. Mm. Um, and so it makes me wonder, I'm like, does it, is it all so much louder because everybody's been listening to loud music for so long that they need it to be louder in order to hear it? Uh, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's part. Well, Hey, you mentioning accents. So mm -hmm. that is a fun question to ask. Oh, mm -hmm. around. Hey. Uh, what are some of your favorite accents to do when you're narrating and what accents will you not do? Um, I absolutely refuse to do anything outside of the U outside of the US. Um, no, I don't. Uh, uh, I don't have I like a. I like when I get a challenge. Like a UK challenge of like a area I have never done. Um, although the whole time I'm there's like some shame because I'm like, I don't already know this. I said I could do it because I think I can do it. And then I do it. Uh, passably are you talking about like a specific area yeah like you know the there's accent, not just the standard yeah the, it, there's so many english accents and like you know like in the u.s there's like obviously people from north carolina and and uh georgia sound different right but it's like it's pretty it's a pretty difficult distinction to make really it's not that it's not that different no it's um, not different it depends I'm in Tennessee, on... so I can say that. <laughs> You're from Tennessee? Yeah. 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 And, like, you know, there's there's little distinctions, but it also really is based on, you know, whatever gender role you ascribe to, whatever class of society you're in. Like, you know, there's mm -hmm. it, your race, it, all of it. All of it stacks up. Oh. And, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't know this was a car dealership. Um, and... <laughs> Uh, and yeah, so it's like, it's a matter of that. Now, I think in the UK, yes, there's some, there's class uh, assignments per, per the voice, but it's also like, what neighborhood are you from? You know, mm. like usually if you're from that neighborhood, that's what you sound like a place that's like more metropolitan. Like, I think part of the thing with us is like, it's very metropolitan in a, in a lot of ways. So like just in terms of its newness. So like 
there's a lot of crossbreeding of accent, whereas like the accents from specific neighborhoods in the UK have been that accent for hundreds mm. of years. So they're not like in the modern world. Yeah, you're going to get like Londoners that sound not so Londony, maybe, but like the it's the it's those na- like those specific neighborhoods and like little counties that sound that like you like they always there's like a trope that you know you can walk a few streets over and there's a, a different accent just based on you know that delineation whatever it is you know but i like to figure that out and it's always funny when someone is like writing a sexy book and then they're like he's from you know essex and it's like is he <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh Lou, what are you doing mate i don't know where we're going but i love you so much you know it's, it's like he's not that sexy <laughs> <laughs> well what accent will you not do or one that you don't think you're good at well i think i'm not good at plenty of them and then i always and then always there's always somebody to be like hey you're, that was that was really legit and i'm like oh, i don't know i don't know if i believe you i think you're just being supportive um mm. but there's plenty of accents i won't do because like a white person would never have that accent um that's that's usually the uh hard line drawn for me and i've i mean the past couple of years has been enlightening <laughs> um it's just been a lot of you know me having to be like that's i can't i can't be that i can't play that character mm-hmm. i can't i'm not gonna be that person mm-hmm. by the way i just i have to go back because i saw there's a guy who's an editor his name is eric uh-huh, I saw that. and he i just did not I never in a million years would I expect you to be watching this, Eric, but I appreciate you. <laughs> Hi. Anyway, just wanted to give him a little shout out. Go wanted to give him a little uh a little blow up uh car dealership shout out. We always called them dancing guys for my kids when we'd see them on the side of the road. Dancing guys. Like, dancing guys. I like, loved it. <laughs> that's that's so that's so that's so perfect. I mean, that's what they are. Yeah. So I had this whole intro that I was going to let everybody who was watching know what uh-huh. we're talking about and who you were in case somebody's strolling in here and they don't know who you are. Okay. Um, so this is Zachary Weber. He is an audiobook narrator. He is a musician and an actor. And has narrated hundreds and hundreds of books across lots of different genres, but mostly romance. Basically, he's a creative genius. Uh, stop it. Right? Um, did I send that? Yeah, no, that was perfect. Did I send that to you? No. Okay, you, okay, good. No. That was just, so, the thing I, the clubhouse thing I did the other day, it was just like me self-effacing, hating on myself. <laughs> Oh, hating on myself send that to them i sent that to them oh my god and it came across like i didn't and i was like oh my god, i was sure. like they're... i was listening in on that and i thought oh they are they're going for it. <laughs> you're really ragging on this guy in a very <laughs> personal manner no i sent that to them but then i was like i was like this sounds like they're coming up with a way to they're starting the roast of me mm-hmm. you know like this is the and I and I and I felt bad because I don't want them, I didn't want them to receive any flack for <laughs> for that. But you know, it's not like we're on the world stage here. It's it's we're we're still in the simple life, and I like that. Right. I mean, it's just me and you and about a hundred people. <laughs> yeah. Is it a hundred? Yeah. I mean, people kind of come in and out constantly during. Oh well, that's rude. I would like it if they would just stay. Yeah, well, I would like that too, but sometimes people have got shit they gotta go take care of. <laughs> yeah, that's true, I guess. So you have probably said this before in, you know, podcasts and things like that. But how and why did the whole narration for audiobooks come about for you? Um, how did that yeah, happen? And how I long have said this. I've been doing this for. A de- like a decade well maybe a little more i think i did my first book in 2012 so yeah like 10 years um 
but uh, I have told I have told this before, but I'll say it again. Um, I um, I'm I'm. Where do I start? I made a um, like a book trailer for Colleen Hoover, who was friends with my mom, and I was like, that's a little actor in in L.A., and I was like, oh, cool, you know, money to do something, and I. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh, all these other book trailers are really not that exciting. And like, there's a lot of stock footage. So let's like shoot a real movie. And so I shot a short film for, uh, for her book, um, this girl. And, uh, I like starred in it and then I did voiceover on it. Um, and it was, you know, the, the character is a poetry teacher. So he had written a poem about her and, the, um, and, they and she loved it she wasn't allowed to release it i think immediately because there was something to do with the with movie rights or something um but then it eventually came out once she like got the rights back um but by that time i'd already been doing books because i'd done that so that sort of snowballed i think it was either that or that like i did something like jamie mcguire or something and then <clears throat> um and then i and then uh and then it just sort of kept snowballing amongst those authors and then um yeah i guess i guess when erica asked me to do gray it was when it was like okay this is it's, it, it just kind of it kind of wouldn't stop after that so <laughs> yeah so was that i was gonna ask you about that because those were those were long books <laughs> Yeah. The last one, we're talking about the Fifty Shades of Grey, but the Grey series that was told from Christian's perspective. Um, but yeah, like 27 hours in length. The that... last one, the last one took two weeks. Wow. And I don't, I don't work fast. I mean, I work, I can work fast, but then I, I'm like, if it's... <laughs> If it's all me, there's no, like, I, I got so used to doing romance in which it's dual. So, like, there's, like, an expedience to it because you can sort of just, like, go, like, oh, I'm going to get to the next task. I, at least that's how my my brain functions. It's like, it's like, okay, if I do this, then I can do this, you know? And it's sort of like a building block way of working. But, like, if there's no skippage and it's just, like, did then I it doesn't matter what the content is I am like I mean I have this like pile of books on my on my bedside table because I like start reading one thing and then read a chapter and then go back to another thing the only thing I can absorb really quickly is a horror novel but like when something is that long it's like <sighs> like I my ADHD really kicks in yeah same. I do that even yeah. with audio, but I look at the run 15 hours. Yeah. I can't really listen to this for 15 hours. Yeah. It's like, how many road trips do I have to go on to <laughs> listen to this? Yeah. yeah. Do you listen to audiobooks yourself? Um, I have been the last couple of years. I like have had Audible for a while and just never used it. I would like go in on the odd occasion and like listen to my own books but then go like why am i paying for this <laughs> um, it's kind of like this weird thing where i'm like why don't i have a free audible subscription and have right. i asked and are you allowed to do that and what's going on with the world um <laughs> it just seems ludicrous but i you know maybe i haven't asked maybe somebody will reach out one day no you um, just ask yeah yeah, but I've been listening to a lot of, uh, 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 I had a sort of dark night of the soul in 2021 and I started listening to a lot of spiritual, some would call self-help books. Mm -hmm. I think they're just, the books that I've been reading at least are just self books because, you know, you really concern yourself with what is happening internally so that you can, uh, you know, manage how you project to the outside world. And it's just a lot of that. Um, I had a sort of coming to perhaps an awakening even. Hi, who's there? I was saying who's hi, Tim Lorraine. Hi. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, I think we should start a, a sort of rebellion. How is Audible making me pay them? Why don't they just say like, hey, th- this, at least this guy. I don't think they even follow me on Instagram, which I think is ludicrous. Mm-hmm. Do they? Maybe they do. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, they probably do. Yeah. But at this point, I mean, if there's a book you want to listen to, you should just send a note to the author and say, hey, I would like to listen to your book. They're going to send you that code. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's codes. Right. Mm-hmm. I see. I just it's it's alarming and shocking to a lot of people how how very not uh, in the loop I am <laughs> um, about certain things. Like they'll be like, you going to APAC? I'm like, when is it? when is it <laughs> yeah exactly and i'm like well what i didn't get an email about it four months ago so oh, i don't God. i can't plan um yeah i like plan. i like plan too and this is why i'm scared of tiktok too because or book talk rather because i'm like there's there's terminology i learn something new every day like uh, and i don't learn it is part of the problem is I don't is I don't go like oh yeah that okay that's that and then remember that and then I'm like I don't know the acronyms for things and then I feel like that's not very nice of me you know that's okay there are people that will help you learn those acronyms everybody yeah. can learn them at some point yeah yeah I guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah I guess you're right so question mm-hmm. with, with your career because you were talking about the gray books. At what point did you realize, I think I'm a celebrity. This is, well, how do I, what do I do with this? <laughs> that's so, that's very kind of you to say. I still haven't had that moment. You have all. not. Even in this, no. this corner of the world, you don't feel that way? You don't think of yourself as famous or... Um. I guess I'd be, I guess I think I'm, I perhaps think I'm a famous audiobook narrator. I think I'm, yeah, in that world, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I guess my perception of what fame is was was just so astronomically more than that. Like, I know, like, I have friends who are, like, on TV shows and, like, on TV all the time. And I wouldn't even consider them famous. Mm-hmm. Even if they have you know, half a mil followers on whatever platform, it's kind of like the different, the chasm between, you know, household name. Like I know, let's just say, if the scale is Beyonce (laughs) and no one, then like, I think I'm still, I think I'm not quite halfway, you know? (laughs) Well, and so like fame as it is defined by whomever, right? Sure, but by me, as like you know, or trying to be an actor, I'm like, oh great, I successfully, uh, you know, am am hanging out in this genre, this specific part of the world. Yeah, Kim, Kim is absolutely correct. You you can't put yourself in that that type of range, right? No, no, but I know. In, in your area of your career, mm-hmm. and especially maybe in the last year or two, going to book signing events, I know fans of audiobooks, like, we want to meet the narrators mm-hmm. when we go to those events. And yeah. so in that corner of the world, you know, your name is recognizable, and people do want to meet you and think of you as more than just a person who reads a book and i and i can fully i can hold space for it all right yeah in the book community you are closer to beyonce range that's (laughs) right (laughs) but see then we start talking about multiple scales because if there's the theoretical beyonce within the realm of audiobook narration sure i blow them out of the water (laughs) sure but (laughs) sure i'm killing it I'm going on tour with Jay-Z right now. Yeah. Um, But, uh, (laughs) you know, it's like, I I think a more credible thing that I, I, the way that I'm comfortable with it is being like, I, I, it's just a means of like connecting with other people 
it doesn't feel like I don't know. I don't know. I guess I don't think about this often enough to have an answer. I think I just think about how nice it feels. It feels really, really nice. And I just like really, I really love how sweet everybody is and kind. Like, I just don't, there's no, there's not so much rabidity. Um, and I used to joke that there was, but there's, it's just like, it's not, nobody's going apeshit. People wait patiently in line. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, yeah, that's like, I don't know. There, that's different. That's that's manageable. I don't think fame is manageable. That's the difference. This I can handle because everyone's nice to me, <laughs> and no one's like ninety nine percent are nice to me. And I just don't think that that's how it is when you're like a celebrity. And a celeb, if you're a celebrity, you get hopefully you know an equal parts flack because you're not like no one is perfect and no one can actually define the populace really Mm -hmm. you know yeah i don't know that makes sense so with all of the books that you have narrated are there any in particular that were especially memorable or had characters that you played that you that really resonated with who you are? <sighs> um, yes. <laughs> yes. And I, <laughs> I keep a list simply because, and like last time I've gone to a couple events of, I've just had people like take a photo of this note that I have on my phone. I recently recommended a book that I don't even remember that well. I just remember loving it and feeling really spiritually inclined to understand it. But it's like, it's a YA novel called Beyond the Rising Tide. And it's had now like sort of a, it's having a bit of a a resurgence because I told several people um, that I really enjoyed it when I did. And I did it long, long ago. Um, and um, it's it's really beautiful. I love things that have like that possess like a magical realism, um, and even a surrealism. Even you know, little fantasy embedded in a, like sort of normal true story. It's basically like anything that's romantic that takes the structure of a Jim Carrey movie. So like, so like Liar Liar is a very Mm. it's 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 like a doofy ass comedy but it's under the premise that like um like a a magic spell like is cast on him and that that can happen and and the reason it works so well is because it's jim carrey but like when i just love that sort of storyline structure when like there and it's it's tough because if you f- try and force it then it's like mm. i did do a book recently in which it wasn't done well and i and it just like i was like what the fuck why is this happening what does this have to do with this but yeah. like in the case of something like liar liar there's <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> it's not like i did liar liar um but there's there's incentive for this character to go through that uh, 